Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today I will be showing you how to create wrinkles and scales and such. So this tutorial was, um, someone asked me to do this tutorial on one of my videos there. Um, I'll just put a little floating comment up there so you can see it. So, and they wanted me to show the, to uh, explain how to make wrinkles or uh, scales, dinosaur skin and such. And it's actually a lot easier than a lot of people think. So I'll teach you how to make wrinkles first. Uh, so I just have uh, Suzanne here, and I have a multi-res modifier at level 4 in sculpt mode. And then we'll just, we'll just uh, take the crease, crease brush, sorry, and uh, let's put some wrinkles around, I don't know, the eyes, I guess. You can just put them anywhere. This is just, uh, yeah. So we can just put some around here. Put some line underneath. Might show a bit better. Uh, forehead, you can do there. Just increase the strength with Shift F and scaling it inwards. And I think that might be a little bit too much strength. Yeah, let's go with that with this here. The strength is at <clears throat> 0.233 for anyone that's curious. And those are pretty subtle wrinkles, but you know you can just increase the strength again to get deeper wrinkles. Make around the eyes here. So that's basically how you make wrinkles. You just take the crease crease brush and you just sculpt wrinkles in. Uh, if you want to see what that looks like in object mode, it will not look so good. And what you would do is just increase the preview. And go all the way up to four, and that's the full preview. And as simple as that, you have wrinkles. Just go on in and sculpt them. Secondly, I will show you how to do scales. So I have this uh, scene set up with a plane and a camera. Uh, but I have this camera set up in a certain way. I have the lens under the camera properties here as orthopedic and the ortho orthographic scale as three. So, uh, what we're doing here is, well first let me show you some of these scales. So there's a lot of different kinds. Uh, I just looked up reptilian scales because when you think of scales you, th you usually think of uh, reptiles. So there's uh, some scales like this, they're oddly shaped, they overlap. Um, there's some like this around this eye here, you can see over here. Um, they don't really overlap, they're actually um, kind of rectangular. And let's see, one or two more examples. You have some oval ones here, they overlap quite a bit. And right here, you got some oval ones that don't overlap at all. So there are quite a variety of scales. Uh, so I'll be, I'll just be teaching you one method, and uh, you can just expand from that to make whatever kind of scales you want. So basically, what we'll be doing is we'll take this plane and I know this doesn't make sense yet, but it will in a minute. And we're going to basically um, make this as a scale. I'm just going to use the mirror modifier for this. Turn on clipping. And we'll add a subdivision right there. Alright, and lastly, let's add a subsurf modifier with Control 2. Now let's bring this down. Uh, let's bring the whole thing up. And we'll bring this in a little bit. Then we'll take these three vertices here, hit N, go to our transform, and turn on the mean crease all the way up to 1. Now we'll give this more of a pointed edge for sharper scales. Then we'll take this one here, uh, move it out on the X just a bit. and sharpen that just a little bit move that up all right so that's your that's your basic scale let's say um actually i'm going to quickly edit that a little bit more just make it look a bit more decent
Okay, so let's say that's your basic scale. Now, all I have in this scene is a camera and this here plane. So we'll go to camera view. And before we render this out, um, go into your world settings preview, turn the background to white. And I also changed the dimensions to 800 by 800. So we render this, you get an image like this. So after that, we go to the uh, node editor, go to here, use nodes, um, shift A, add a color invert, plop that in, render again, and then we're going to save this image. So F3 to save, and now we have that image saved. So what we're going to do now is go into our 3D view, and on layer 1, I have Suzanne once again. And we're going to go to Sculpt Mode. Once again, I have a multi-resolution modifier, and a subdivider about four times again. And what we'll do is we'll add in a new brush. So I already have one called Brush 001. Let's just change this to Scales. And this is where we'll actually be making the scales. So let's go in under our texture and add a new one and as a type image or movie then you can see we have render result which is popping up so we'll go under our where we saved our scale and add it in there and you can see it automatically transfers over here so we have the scales brush we have texture um, we don't need symmetry on for this so what we can do now is, uh, let's turn on this overlay button. You can see this. Should give me a moment here. Uh, shade this smooth. Might need to subdivide Suzanne once more to get the resolution we need. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we have uh, this overlay on, and this kind of shows us how the scale looks. And let's just tweak a few parameters if we can under here. Let's turn on clip, which seems to have broken it. Okay, so we'll keep that on repeat. Okay, here we are. I think we've fixed it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you just kind of draw those on and you have scales. Simple as that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty basic to make scales, really. And, you know, um, so if, if that's all you want to know, that's the end of the video for you then. Uh, thank you for watching. But if you want to know how that works exactly, uh, I'll explain it now. So basically what we did is we took and made something that represented or kind of looked like a scale. And we rendered it, uh, tweaked it real quick, and got it into here. Now the reason we need it black and white is because of how the uh, alpha channel works. So basically, the brush engine in Blender uses alphas for the brushes. And the most basic kind, if you have like any other brush, like say Blob, you have a regular just a sphere texture and that it it's just a circle it's not like this it's just plain out circle no special shapes and that's how they usually work and the black in the alpha channel basically means that it doesn't do anything it's just there as a background and the white is basically telling the sculpt engine in blender that this is what you are drawing this is you know basically what has to appear so when you do that uh, on this little brush icon you can see here. let's just see if I can make it larger if I hit F you can actually see what it's drawing it has that little um, image in the middle of the circle and that shows you what it's, it's sculpting and then you can see the gray around the black image and that's what's the rest of it that's showing and yeah it's basically how it works it's just using an alpha brush uh, so you can do this with any kind of image as long as it's black and white. You could, I don't know, use it with circles or whatever, I don't know, different type of shapes and it'll work. Uh, the only other thing I should show you here is that you have different kinds of 
um, brushes you can work with, or sorry, um, brush mappings. So you have uh, this stencil one here, which is if you brush it on, it's the only place to brush. If we try to brush out here, it won't work. Let's just undo that. Uh, you have view plane, which is well, it might look horrible at first, but if you go under your options, I believe. No, it changed once more. Stroke. And then we go under spacing. And let's say the spacing is um, 50%. You can kind of see it, it works. Uh, let's just scale down our brush to make it look a bit more normal. And let's switch, switch views just for, just because. So you can see what it looks like with about 50% spacing uh, if you need more you know you can crank it up to say 80 let's just see how that looks and yeah you can get bumps and scales that way so that's what that's supposed to do um, you have your area plane which is just your basic basic brush tiled so when you go over this way let's see, add an overlay in you can see where all the tiles are You can have 3D, which is a really 3D, and it, I don't, I'm not quite sure why, but it always ends up as a uh, little bumps, not exactly the shape you want. Um, random, which is just you know, random how it does it, and you have a stencil, which I believe I already showed you. So we'll just uh, keep this to view plane. All right now, um, this is a little extra bonus if you want to um, try to draw the scales a little bit faster because you know it's always good to save a bit of time what you can do is open up your image editor drop your image in like I just did there and select this with uh, let's use the fuzzy, fuzzy select which I believe is right here control C control V and that to a new layer you can move the scales around uh, might want to scale them a bit. Maybe I think I chose the wrong tool. And scale it down. M to move. Um, you could probably scale this as well. But just just the white part of the image would have to be scaled. So basically, um, it's not the best example, sorry. But what you could do is just mute that layer. Have a new one with the foreground color so it's black. And then we'll just uh, control C and control V. Put this to a new layer. You can move that. Move this. Paste the layer once more. And do something like that, and then you can just uh, export it. I'll just replace this, and then when you go into Blender, you can reload the image. Just click the little file scales multi, and then when you go and draw the scales, it will draw them as a multitude, or as you know, just same alpha. So it'll have like a, it'll have this effect instead of the previous one. So yeah, I'm not going to ramble on anymore. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two on how to make scales and wrinkles. Um, if you have any other suggestions, just drop them in the comment box below. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.